What is up guys? Welcome back to another video here in Rise of Kingdoms. I am Shinji42 and today I am going to be tackling Commander Tearless version 1.3. So you guys are probably wondering, Shinchi, where is version 1.0, 1.1, and 1.2? Now, to let you guys know, we have published 1.0, 1.1, 1.2 on Facebook. And we tried to get some information, and we got some negative feedbacks on some of them, and some positive feedback as well. Now, we've adjusted some of the things in there, because, um, you know, the Commander tier list is going to be based on my perception in the game, and my own approach. Now, there is now an SS tier. This is new on version 1.3. Now, this was suggested by ROK World to create an SS tier since we're also having too many commanders in the S tier. We have to differentiate the SS tier and S tier. So there are other commanders that are slightly better than the other ones. So that's why we have an SS tier. In the SS tier, these are going to be the strongest commander in our view. That We have five commanders in here. Um, Richard, Yi Songye, Genghis Khan, and Edward the Black Prince, and also Alexander the Great. And the S tier, we have Constantine, Saladin, and Tomiris. A tier, and we just can go on and read this, but we're going to go through, right? We're going to go through um, tackling why these commanders are in their own tiers, and how are they going to benefit you as a gamer for Rise of Kingdoms. Now, we put Richard in the SS tier. The reason why is because Richard is one of the most OP commander out there. Richard with the healing factor, it's crazy. In his defense tree, it's crazy. You guys have seen some of my battle guides now with Richard, um, battle testing. Uh, you can see how effective Richard is. And I will also produce um, more battle testing videos for you guys to see since now we are T5 account. Our tech is now leveled with other T5 players, therefore we can efficiently do some battle testing. Yi Song, yeah, I may be a little bit biased here, but I think he is an SS tier, especially if you are defending um, structures. And um, it really prevents being swarmed of that structure. And even if you are casting a full archer rally with YSG, it really deals a lot of damage when you know there are surrounding enemy units with that circle AOE. So Genghis Khan is also in the SS tier because of his low rage requirement, 950, compared to the other commanders that are gonna require 1000 rage. Now, the big thing here is that this damage factor is massive, uh, 1700, and also uh, the expertise of Genghis Khan, which is 30% chance to um, cast this chosen one skill again. Um, but although it's going to be based on RNG, 30% is a big number in this game. Genghis Khan can also um, rage restore and increase skill damage when his troops are 50% strength or below. So this is one of the reasons why we have Genghis Khan and Genghis Khan is a widely used commander paired with Tao Tao. Now we also have Edward of the Woodstock, a really good commander because of his capability in the battlefield. Edward does have a high rage requirement with a high damage factor. But if you're using Edward, he has to be a primary commander or else if he is a secondary commander, his damage factor is going to be reduced. He also has the capability to counter infantry units. He has a 5% increased damage bonus towards infantry. Also has some moving speed. Now, Edward also has a skill damage bonus. It's a good pair with YSG because YSG already has a skill damage bonus now we've paired that up with Edward, it's going to boost that even further. But Edward was actually made to pair with Tommy Riss. The reason why Edward has a high rage is because he is going to be paired with Tommy. And Tommy, you need to, um, you know, proc that poison. We'll talk about that a little bit here. With Edward also, his skill, he is going to reduce his own rage, which is going to help out for Tommy Riss stacking all of those poisons now if you guys are looking for an edward guide look up my video look up edward's walkthrough rise of kingdoms you will find my video and you can understand a little bit better about edward of woodstock so 
Alexander the Great, a uh, very OP commander. We have seen this on some of our battle testing um, with Anon. With Alexander, I think the key thing here with Alexander is that attack tree. The infantry and attack tree, that is what defines Alexander the Great really great in this game. With Alex's first skill, he is able to put shield on himself and his allies. What I like about Alex is that being a versatile commander, all of his skill translates into the battlefield. There is no loss in his skill. And with this last skill that he has, I love it. When there is no skill activated, it's going to increase your attack. But when there is skill activated, when the shield is up, it's going to give you a bonus on defense. So for the S tier, we have Constantine, Saladin, and Tamaris. Now, um, we have to define, right, which one is going to be SS and S. Now, these S tier are very strong still. Um, even the A tier is very strong. But... The definition of the SS tier is that they're a little bit more um, unique than any other commanders, very versatile as well. So when we talked about Richard, a versatile commander, um, really good for free to play as well. And YSG with the circular AOE, Genghis Khan with the low uh, active skill and high damage factor. And with Edward as well, um, uniqueness of Edward with the high, super high damage factor and alexander with his infantry and attack tree and we talked about a little bit those differentiates with ss s and a for all the legendary commanders in here so we have constantine here in the s tier a very um really strong commander very tanky commander as well um he has a healing factor you know when his troops are about 50 percent strength and he's going to proc a really high um, factor of healing and so with constantine also he has some you know um, tanky capability with his active skill so you guys can check that out um if we're gonna go through all of single you know, all the commanders in here we're gonna take forever but so we're gonna try to summarize as much as we can um saladin a uh, unique commander because of his um capability to counter richard but that's the only thing that is really unique for him that's why he is in the s tier he's not an ss tier because not every commander you know you can go against with with using saladin saladin is really for my case scenario is just really good for um countering a richard and you will see that when people are defending with richard they will be sending saladin to counter the healing of richard now tommy Riss, i said i'll talk about here a little bit more um with tommy Riss, she has a poison and that poison of Tomiris, you need to be able to stack that up. If you are going to be looking at Tomiris skills and that first skill that she has, you will see there's a you know, formula there. And the higher stack of poison you have, the stronger that active skill becomes. And that's why you need to pair it up with Edward so you can delay the active skill being propped. Now, Edward is going to be the main commander and Tomiris is the second. We may adjust Tomiris in version maybe 1.4, 1.5, and we're going to see how this thing works. I wanted to test it out, but in based on estimation, she is going to remain in S as for this version of the tier list. Now for the A tier of her, the legendary commanders, we have Barka, Martel, Minamoto, Frederick, El Cid, and Wu Zetian. Now for Hannibal Barca, um, I think Hannibal Barca is an A tier because he is just not as versatile as the other commanders in, in the game. And um, um, with his conquering skill here and also the leadership skill here, um, it really doesn't help Hannibal Barca um, on um, like defending structures and other things really. And I really invest on Hannibal Barca. The reason why is because I was running low on troops on KVK Season 1. And then I realized that I need a good leadership commander if I'm going to start sending mixed troops in the, to a rally. Because everyone was running low on archers. So um, th that's a key thing for Barca. It's more of a fallback, in my opinion, for my case, uh, when you are running low on specific units into the game to send out for your um, rally, especially if you're the rally leader. Now, what's great about Barca and what's unique about him is that he has this conquering skill. When he attacks a city, he is going to be healing only when he is attacking a city, but not when he is attacking on the open field battle. Um, I love to use Barca um, using with Aetelflaed. Um, when I have to do a debuff on a rally that is going to attack us. So you guys probably have seen those on my KVK Season 2 highlights. Charles Martel, um, A tier here, um, a great commander, um, very tanky, 
um, with a defense tree. Um, I think he is um, slightly, you know, just a little bit lower than Richard. I think Richard is definitely going to be better than Martel. Um, Charles Martel, um, really good um, shield absorption, and he has a good counterattack bonus as well. So if he's getting swarmed, those counterattack is going to benefit him big time. Minamoto, one of the cheapest commander here in Rise of Kingdoms if you are going to pay for it. Um, easiest commander to obtain and the legendary section. Um, I think Minamoto is my first um, maxed out commander here. And I think 80 or 90% of the player base that spends money, uh, Minamoto would be their first legendary commander to max out, right? You guys probably agree. If you agree, hit that thumbs up. Um, Frederick, um, a leadership commander with skill. And um, with Frederick, it's great to pair up, especially with like, um, maybe like a YSG or even if with, you pair it up with Edward or even Minamoto. If you're running a mixed troops with, you know, skilled commander secondary, uh, Frederick would be your best bet. And you can uh, put so many troops in there because of Frederick's skill. It allows you to, you know, with a leadership skill, same as Hannibal Barca, to bring more troops. And also with their talent tree, right, with the fresh recruit talent tree, you can get more troops into one single march as well. Now, El Cid, um, as you guys seen El Cid, I, I really use El Cid a lot into the game. But even then, I don't rank El Cid as an S tier or SS tier because uh, there's some things with El Cid that is just not so good. Um, you, we have to wait for El Cid, you know, to be weak before some of the buff activates for El Cid. And that's going to be his last skill. Now, El Cid's second skill is great, but it's a 10% chance to proc the additional skill. So it's not that um, high chance for the RNG. And um, El Cid's expertise skill is amazing because they updated it and they changed it a little bit to counter infantry. But even then, it's still not enough to really win against Richard with El Cid. Therefore, we're just going to place El Cid in the A tier. Now, we have this new commander that, you know, most of us still doesn't have at this point when you guys are watching. Maybe in the future, if you're watching in the future of this video, we already have Wu Zetian. But right now, we don't have Wu Zetian. Nobody has him on the Lost you know, Kingdom yet. Um, with Wu Zetian, it's amazing and a really good garrison defense. But I don't like her talent tree. The support talent tree doesn't really translate to awesome amazing defense commander for structures now what i think with wu Tian would be a secondary commander now if uh, wu Tian has a defense talent tree now we're going to be talking something different there if she has a defense tree that's going to be op um and really i would probably put her in the s or ss tier at that time i would increase her um with Wu Zetian, I think as a secondary commander, she is going to be at best. Um, she has a lot of garrison defending. So when you have that garrison word, you can defend on flag structures as well. So she has, a, you know, damage to the rally. If you're getting rallied, there is some bonus damage in here if you look at the second skill. So overall, I think Wu Zetian is a great um, defender, um, but not like the best defender out there because of her talent tree because she is going to be placed as a secondary commander most likely. And the reason why we're not putting her in the S tier or SS here is because two of her skills here is not going to translate into the battlefield. It's just mostly going to be for defending structures. So that's the reason why. Um, overall, I think she's great. A uh, good commander to have, I think much better than Charlemagne. Um, I think Wu Jiten is definitely gonna be better than Charlemagne. So B tier now, um, <laughs> looking at this chart, I just realized that we have way too many legendary commanders and not a whole lot of epics actually. <laughs> oh my God, the, the ratio now is too much. I think, uh, I think the game needs to produce more epics. <laughs> um, as you can see, Tao Tao, Caesar, Meme, Charlemagne, Eito, Flay, and Sun Diok. Now I'm gonna go through this really brief. Um, some of you guys may complain why Tao Tao is on a B tier. The reason why is because of the talent tree. Um, the mobility is great, um, but I don't think in my case I will be using Tao Tao as a primary commander when I'm doing a heavy fighting. No, I will only use Tao Tao if I'm hunting players, if I'm hunting uh, farmers or 
I'm going to be that one that chases the um, running away troops. So that's what Tao Tao is going to be used for because of his mobility tree. But with his talent tree, I don't think it's really that good. But his skills are really good. That's why you're going to be pairing Genghis Khan and Tao Tao. Tao Tao has a healing. All right. He's going to be one of those commanders that are cavalry that has a healing similar to Pelagius. Now, uh, looking at the Caesar, Mehmed, Charlemagne, personally, I am not a big fan of um, conquering commanders. And these guys are really good at the conquering part of the, the, you know, the skills. So I am not really giving them a high credit because of that conquering um, talents. You, although I give credit to Hannibal Barca because you guys might find that crazy because Hannibal Barca has some big, big debuff that I like. And also with Hannibal Barca, um, he has one of those skills, right? When there is different type of units, he will have a stronger attack output for that one. And if he is on the enemy territories as well. So when you're rallying with Hannibal Barca or attacking, you're going to the enemy's territory, you get bonus as well for Hannibal Barca. Now with Julius Caesar, I personally kind of biased here. Not a big fan of Julius Caesar. Um, he does have some really good buffs as well for himself and um, reduction for the uh, the commanders that are going to attack him. Um, really good, kind of like a tanky leadership commander, honestly. But overall, I think, um, you know, Caesar is not the best. Uh, he is going to be the, one of the easier for the pay to wins to get in the beginning. I think he is going to be very effective in the early stages of the game. But I think in the later stage of the game, I think you can invest on a better commander instead than Caesar. Uh, Mehmed, um, you can use Mehmed really good if you are. And honestly, if you guys love uh, city hitting, these are probably the commanders that you guys want. Caesar, Mehmed, Charlemagne. Um, but if not, if not, if you're looking for more of an overall um, commander, um, you would want to go with your S, 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 and A tier. So Mehmed is really great as well. It has um, active skill damage. And actually, I used to invest on Mehmed before. And if you look into my Mehmed, I invested in him a little bit here, 5, 2, 4. But I stopped because I thought, you know, thinking about it, I was like, hey, I could actually invest you know, on other legendary commanders instead, then it's going to benefit me a lot more. Charlemagne, definitely not even going to use him, um, but he's good for your attacking cities. I'm not a huge fan of that one. Aetoflate is here um, as the B rank. Uh, I think Aetoflate is really good for free-to-play players. So this might be something as a free-to-play player that you guys want to invest on. Um, I put her as a B rank because I'm only using her as a um, support to Hannibal Barca to further debuff a rally when there is a rally so eight of really good honestly a peacekeeper commander um has some really good debuffing aoe so definitely i think you should be investing on eight of i mean she's free so why not so um we have sun Diok here um you guys might be wondering why she's up here and cleopatra is you know like down there um the reason why is that sun Diok has a you know good active skill reduces rage from the enemy and um really is good for attacking a city. So when you're going to be attacking a city with siege units, so she benefits a lot with siege. So when you attack a city with a bunch of siege units to break down the wall or pillage somebody, this may be a good commander to use because he, she is going to give out a lot of buff for the siege units. And also she has a rage reduction, meaning that she can, you know, um, limit the active skill of the opponent that you're pillaging which is in turn going to reduce deaths or casualties on your case so um we are now going to be on the c tier i think we're running about 19 minutes as of right now um we're gonna do this a little bit quicker and um so it doesn't take too long of your time with um this c tier here we have Budica, scipio osman herman ilji sun to pelagius i think i can wrap um <laughs> Budica here um, I think I put her here because, you know, the versatility of Burika. She can be a peacekeeper and also great into the battlefield. She has some disability um, in her, you know, active skill. There's three things going on in her active skill if you're looking at it. It is going to have a damage factor. So um, attack and also going to reduce the attack of the enemy and also reduce the rage of the enemy. That's how great Budika's first skill is. So on Budika's third skill, she's going to be able to restore rage and also have a healing factor. On this one, she is going to be able to proc high damage. I think the lowest one will be a 2% chance, but it's going to be really high damage. 
with her expertise, this becomes a 1000 damage factor. So I think Boudica is one of the really good um, epic commanders out here. So we have Scipio Africanus here. I like his um, talent, leadership and attack. Um, I think a good pair for him would be like a, um, even Boudica would be a good pair for him or a Zun 2 I think would be the best pair um, for Scipio. Um, some people like to do a Joan of Arc also because of the buff that Joan of Arc has and Scipio Africanus, you should be running with mixed troops with this one. Um, what I like about this is the leadership also is going to give you a lot of troops into the battlefield with um, Scipio Africanus. Now, Osman, another leadership commander that has skill. So Osman is quite unique because he's a leadership skilled for the epic tier, similar to like Frederick. Now with Osman, um, he really does have a, a high damage proc on his first skill here. And he also has this. So this third skill he has after an active skill has been casted, this thing is going to proc as well. Now, skimming through um, Herman, um, I love Herman. I love Herman. As you guys have seen this, I love archers. I think Herman is one of the best commanders for archers um, in the epic tier, better than Kosunoki. Um, I think Herman really stands out in here. If if I had a C+, plus, maybe I think Herman's going to be up there. Um, Herman is really good with his rage reduction. I think pairing up Herman and Budica, if you're really looking for a, a total disabling uh, type of march, that's going to be your best bet. Um, Herman, quite unique, be able to silence and reduce rage at the same time. Um, I like that. And he also has a marching speed bonus for the archers. Yuji, um, a really good commander as well. I like his um, infantry and attack tree. So if you're looking at Yuji, I like Yuji because I think the attack tree is just really good. Um, similar with like Alexander the Great. Uh, Yuji... I would pair him up with, you know, as a primary commander with zone two and using that attack tree to maximize um, the damage output. So where is Ilji? Apparently I cannot find Ilji, it's right here. So it's gonna be infantry and attack. So Zun two, um, of course we all love Zun two because of his AOE skill. Um, great for crowd control. Um, I like Zun two because he is similar to YSG. And Zun 2 was actually my very, very first epic commander in the game when I first started this game as China Civilization. So Pelagius here is in the C tier. Um, Pelagius is a good, you know, cavalry commander. I have a good skill damage. Pelagius has a good healing as well. So he is kind of like a Tao Tao for an epic commander. Pelagius is really good. Um, you, I would use him as a primary commander. Yeah, so if you're going to put Belisarius there, uh, really good. I think out of all three... Um, Cavalry Commander Pelagius probably be the higher tier among all of them. Now looking into D tier, we have Joan of Arc here on the D tier. Now some people may argue with me that Joan of Arc should be higher, maybe a C tier because of her skills. Her skills are great. Her skills are great. Her talent is not the best actually. Um, I used to run with Joan of Arc before as a kind of like a free-to-play player. Um, I use it with the integration and stuff. I think if you have the other commanders, you know, you don't need to focus on Joan of Arc. I would focus Joan of Arc as a um, gatherer. But her active skill is tremendous. It's good because you can actually buff your teammate with that. So I think Joan of Arc, if there is going to be a D plus or C minus, I would probably put Joan of Arc there. But we didn't make that category. So to simplify things a little bit easier here. Um, I'm not saying that anybody that doesn't know the D tier is useless. Um, I think the D tier is good, but these commanders are going to be your support commanders. Um, Kosunoki, a great commander also. I, you know, my civilization was Japan and I had Kosunoki in the beginning. But I think Herman is just a little bit better than Kosunoki. So I want to make a difference there. Kosunoki has an AOE damage um, with active skill. Kosunoki also has this um, negative buff removal for himself. So I think that's a really interesting... Um, skill, I think very unique for Kosunoki. So we have Baybars here. I think Baybars is a, it's a very interesting commander. He has an AOE um, skill damage as a cavalry. Um, he will be able to reduce the marching speed of the enemy if they are hit by the active skill. Um, although I'm putting Baybars here as a D tier lower than Pelagius, I think Pelagius would be a better primary commander. But if you guys disagree, um, let me know in the comment section below for that one. Lohar, um, of course, don't use Lohar when you are PvPing, when you're fighting against other commanders. Lohar would be strictly for um, barbarian farming, and if you're trying to level up other commanders, pair it up with Lohar as a primary commander. 
Belisarius, a lot of people love Belisarius, and um, you guys may rage that I put him under the D tier here. Uh, the reason why I put him as a D tier is because of the mobility tree. So you're not really going to be going head to head, to head with another commander or another player with Belisarius here. You would probably want to use Belisarius when you're hunting um, commanders, you know. So that's why I'm putting him as a D tier. Because I don't think he is going to be the best commander, you know, when you're going into a big field fighting. I would rather use Pelagius in there. Um, so Belisarius, um, if you have a different type of playing style, really. So if your playing style is more of a chaser, maybe you want to rank up Belisarius in that case. And also Tao Tao, because these are two commanders that are really great at chasing other commanders because of their mobility. But again everything has to address right everything's going to be addressed into your own playing style every single one of us the governors here in the rise of kingdoms have a different style of gaming now cleopatra let's not even debate that she is going to be on that tier i don't even know it's like a dash tier right so i kind of want to just tackle this a little bit here the advanced and elite commanders they're going to be your blue commanders and your green commanders majority of the blue commanders for my case i use them as a farmer and you guys can definitely do that as well. 100% they're mostly used for farmers. Now, not everyone are going to be able to have really awesome commanders, really good commanders as well. So if you are going to be a free-to-play player and you're going to, you know, not focus as much on your commanders into epic commanders, but I really suggest to focus on epic commanders. But as a free-to-play, right, you're not going to be able to do that. First, you're not going to have a lot of, you know, legendary commanders. And then your epic commanders, you're also going to be limited. Now, you have no choice but to use the green commanders and uh, the blue commanders. So some of the things that you can use as a green commander, um, use Markswoman if you are going to be using into the green commander, Dragon Lancer, um, as well as City Keeper. Um, I don't really want to get too much into this because I want you guys to focus more on the epic commanders, even if you are a free-to-play player. But I understand that sometimes you are going to be, at some point of your playing or your gaming life, you're going to be playing with these commanders. So work with those, City Keeper, um, you know, also Dragon Lancer, and you know, Lancelot is a really good commander here for their tier, for the blue commanders in here. Where is Lancelot? So Lancelot is another great commander here for their tier and Tomo goes in as well. So using this, maybe you can do a pairing with Tomo goes in and a, um, you know, Lancelot, I guess. <laughs> There's really not a whole lot of things to do in here, but you can make use of it still. 600 damage factor, right? This is still, be that's, better, that's better than Dragon Lancer though. Dragon Lancer has a 75 <laughs> additional damage factor and direct damage factor. Well, that's going to be, um you know 150 there but i think this one is 600 you get mobility and you get this little bit you know damage bonus i don't know i just want to at least not leave out um these commanders out here for you guys because i know the struggle you know i started out as a free-to-play player and i end up using this i mean one of our first commander guide was zun 2 and tomo gozen right when we first started this game so you can use those type of combos still I just don't want you guys to be stuck on because you guys are seeing, oh, a bunch of legendaries and, you know, I don't have any commanders to use because all I see on YouTube is legendary commanders, legendary commanders, and they don't really talk about these lower tiers commanders. But like I said, I, if you're going to invest any um, time XP books, go invest it on your epics rather than the green or the elite or the advanced commanders. So hopefully that's helpful. So I want to thank ROK World for creating the infographics here for us so that we can present this on YouTube. So make sure don't forget to check out ROK.guy slash tier list. Check out the website. There is a lot of good stuff in there and really good information. So make sure to hop onto this website, ROK.guide. If you guys haven't checked this out, this website presents you a lot of Rise of Kingdoms text guide in here. It is pretty amazing, guys. A lot of amazing contents in this website for text information base. So definitely hop on this. Don't let the opportunity of having all the information out here to be wasted.
check it out rok.guide there we go everybody we finished the commander tier list um we will continue to update you guys with we are going to be versioning out our commander tier list this is the first time that we created a video about this so we have been publishing them on facebook getting the feedback from the community but now we have made a video about it let me know what you guys think if you guys are new to the channel also don't forget to click that subscribe button and turn that notification on don't forget to give this a thumbs up and also share the content that we have so we can spread the wealth of knowledge in this game. I will see you guys again next time, and bye-bye. Um,